Oh, what a boost for Chelsea. Three days after limping off at Blackburn, Petr Cech starts for the home side. It's helped soften the blow with top scorer Didier Drogba and captain John Terry still on the sidelines. Only one change from the Ewood Park win and the change in formation too. Claudio Pizarro gets his first Premier League start since August. He joins Andrei Shevchenko up front. John Obi Mikel makes way. Without a win in four now, Aston Villa, but without the squad to shuffle things too much. The same sign here from the one-all draw against Manchester City at the weekend. Stylian Petrov was ready to return, but he's sidelined with illness. Sean Maloney keeps his place. So Villa field the same starting eleven that inflicted defeat on Chelsea back in September. Yes, no Didier Drogba, their joint top scorer. No John Terry, that inspirational captain. Similarities with last year, but no doubt about it, Trevor, they will have had a massive boost with the news that Petr Cech is fit to start. I think it surprised everyone. Nobody anticipated Petr Cech being available, but I'm sure that uh, they're absolutely delighted about it. Look forward to an interesting encounter this afternoon. Both teams playing 4-4-2. At the moment, Agbon Lahore is started on the right-hand side of midfield. We're obviously expecting him to be up front alongside uh, John Carew, but it's uh, Sean Maloney who started in that position. Touched on it earlier, but interesting to note that this is the same Villa starting lineup that got the better of Chelsea, and deservedly so, back in September when they won by two goals to nil at Villa Park. Egbon Lahore, one of the scorers that day, that night as well. Chelsea, just four of their starting lineup start here, and it's Egbon Lahore looking to make mischief early on and rattles one just wide of Petr Cech's goal. Well, it's quite clear that Martin O'Neill's intentions are to try and get Agbon Lahore having a go at Ashley Cole. And he does that immediately. Takes possession, comes on the inside of Cole and hits it early into the near post area. But Petr Cech has it covered and allows the ball to go honestly into the side netting. Six goals this season, including that one that sealed the win against Chelsea. Well, they've enjoyed themselves recently uh, against the side in blue. Chelsea haven't beaten Villa in the last four games. Chelsea haven't even scored against the side from Birmingham in the last two matches. A meaningful challenge in there by Nigel Rio Coca and the captain Gareth Barry carries forward. Sets it up on his left. Opportunity here and check again is tested at his near post although yet again it finds its way into the side netting. Well Ashley Young believes that uh, Petr Cech got a touch to that. It was great play from Gareth Barry. Tries to beat Petr Cech at the near post and quite clearly he gets a touch to it. Probably wouldn't have gone in, but he made sure by turning it away for a corner. And Phil Dowd, nor the linesman, saw that. Villa starting brightly, looking to catch Chelsea a little bit cold perhaps. Here's Michael Essien. Check. He was hoping for a nice quiet uh, reintroduction to uh, the Premier League fray. He hasn't got it. Now, first chance for Chelsea to get forward with their Peruvian Pizarro. And we'll settle for the first corner of the game. So dangerous from set pieces so often. Avram Grant's side and Lampard will take. Here comes Alex Kalou in there as well. So too Pizarro. They've dealt with it. And they have plenty of height back now, the giant figure of Zat Knight among them. Busy work from Maloney to unsettle Paolo Ferreira. And the corner kick is Aston Villa's reward. We well, didn't deal with that particularly well, Paolo Ferreira. Once he allowed that ball to bounce, then he put himself in difficulty. Well, Aston Villa's opening goal against Chelsea earlier on this season came from a situation just like this. That night, rising highest. First check to the first test for Chelsea, helped on by Larson. And Petr Cech gets it away. You can see why they wanted him in there. Only conceded one goal, Petr Cech, in his last seven Premier League games. Barry's corner, Czech thought about coming. 
scooping to head was Ricardo Carvalho and the Portuguese defenders done well for Chelsea and he's provided a platform for attack and the touch there by Paulo Ferreira now John Carew Larson has stayed forward Maloney in the penalty area and Alex forced to surrender yet another corner to Villa well Villa win a corner but they could so easily have been in trouble because Joe Cole broke on the counter-attack and Paulo Ferreira caught in possession if he had released him then Joe Cole would have had a free run on goal Ashley Young with the whipped in corner check did very well and be fresh in his mind he was caught out recently for that only goal he's conceded in the uh, last seven games from a corner kick in the defeat against Arsenal the only blemish on Chelsea's recent record and they've only lost three times this season once away to Manchester United once away to Arsenal and once against this lot of course Probably weaved through there by Joe Cole who has started as we expected out on the right of that midfield Trevor yes it's a 4-4-2 most clearly that uh, Chelsea are playing Joe Cole obviously in good confident mood Having got that all-important winner at Ewood Park, and what a good goal it was. Both his last two goals for uh, Avram Grant's side have turned out to be absolutely vital winners in 1-0 victories. It was the one here against West Ham United, of course, as well. Lively start to the game. And uh, if Chelsea were under any illusions that Aston Villa were going to come here with any air of caution about them. And I think we've seen in the opening minutes that uh, Villa have come here meaning to... Uh, find the path back to winning ways it's been four without a win for them now perhaps lucky to get a draw away at Sunderland a disallowed goal perhaps unlucky not to get all three points last time out against Manchester City they had uh, much the better of the game here's Cole Essien Lampard of John Terry a timely return from the back problems that has uh, blighted Ricardo Carvalho's season to have uh, him make up the numbers of the back now as Ashley Cole blocked off there he felt he was as like Conlon Hall matched him stride for stride nothing given though well, six to one after than the other wasn't it and obviously the uh, majority of the supporters here today are supporting Chelsea they felt that uh, like Bon Lahore committed the first foul on Joe on Ashley Cole. That's going to be an interesting confrontation, isn't it? Because I mentioned that uh, Ag Bon Lahore is playing on the right. Part of his duty, of course, is to try and stop Cole from getting forward. Here's Maloney into John Carew. Goodness me, he was back in the nick of time, wasn't he, Michael Essien? John Carew looking for his second goal in as many games. Villa and there uh, chalking them up early on it's certainly an enterprising start from Villa <laughs> Barry the left footer from the right hand side Carvalho rose highest and Joe Cole just uh, delaying the passage onto the ball of uh, Ashley Young who gets the better of Pizarro, fizzed across by Young for Carew, great worked opportunity and Carew with a great chance to open the scoring. Brilliant play from Ashley Young. Slips it through the legs here of Pizarro as he comes to close him down. And it's a great ball in the box, Carew really should have done better, it was right on his head, didn't have to move. Good opportunity and Carew really should have put Aston Villa in the lead starting to make the chances though more regularly starting to make Chelsea uncomfortable at the back on a more regular basis and then Lahore taking on three and in the end the way to Chelsea numbers too much Kalu had his shirt pulled by Gabriel and Lahore and a free kick for Chelsea Phil Dowd is, uh, I think, going to be rather lenient with uh, 
Gabby Agbon Lahore because on another day shirt pulling is normally an automatic yellow card a little bit of festive leniency from the uh, man in the middle filled out Wilfred Bauma, the Dutch international, looks for the big Norwegian John Carew. Pizarro. Ferreira. Essien. Shevchenko. Last challenge by Nigel Rio Coca. Midfield in force of Villa, but now Michael Essien, Shevchenko. And now plays opposite number seven, Ashley Young. That's a great ball in Kalou. Terrific save by Scott Carson. Kalou must have thought that he was about to tap it in. Wouldn't have counted anyway. The flag up, but Chelsea's best worked opportunity so far, nonetheless. It's a good early ball in from Ferreira from the right hand side. Kalou, I think, goes a little bit too early. Well, it was very tight, wasn't it? I'm not so sure that he was offside. I think he was in line with Melberg. But it was brave goalkeeping by Carson. He knew he had to be brave going down at the feet of Kalou. Carew. Ashley Young. Good support from Gareth Barry. Corner kick Villa again. Well, Aston Villa have made their intentions very clear this afternoon. They've come here on a mission. They're looking to try and win this game. They've been very dominant in this early part. And probably deserve to be in the lead. Ashley Young, Alex, uses his bulk to get in the way. Joe Cole having to defend from the front again. Carvalho. So many Chelsea players being kept so busy early on here. And uh, the relief of a free kick, and it is a relief. Phil Dode obviously saw something that I didn't quite see. Martin Larson was uh, very upset about the decision, as were one or two other Villa players. They thought it wasn't a problem. Everything but the goal in the uh, first 12 minutes or so for Aston Villa. So many sides during Chelsea's long, long unbeaten home run in the Premier League have come here and shut up shop. Jose Mourinho famously talked about sides so coming in and parking the bus in front of goal. And that's certainly not Aston Villa's approach here today. They mean to bring this run of Chelsea's to an end. I think you play to your strengths in football, and that's what Martin O'Neill feels with the team that he's got here. They're very good going forward. Got some young, exciting strikers in Young and Agbon Lahore. The vastly experienced Carew, who's always a handful to play against with his huge frame, makes it so difficult for centre halves. It's an exciting blend he's uh, got together here, isn't it? A uh, few eyebrows raised when uh, that's part of £9 million spent on Ashley Young, but really he has stepped up to the table this season combined with the continental experience of Carew, who's uh, played many years in the Champions League. Vibrancy about Aston Villa, particularly the way they've started here. Ashley Cole missed out. Simon Kalou did not, but a bomb Lahore has stolen back for the visitors, looking for Carew. And this could be a goal, it is! Sean Maloney opens the scoring for Aston Villa. They lead at Stamford Bridge. And richly deserved. They've been the much better side in these early 13 minutes of this game. And this was an excellent work goal. Well finished from Maloney, Carew did his bit, and so did Agbon Lahore. Finds Carew, who's onside, heads it back across to his striking partner Maloney, one-on-one -on -one against Petr Cech, and he finishes with style. Good header from Carew, takes it on the volley, does Maloney, to beat Petr Cech. Chelsea are breached, Chelsea are up against it, Villa lead. Lampard, Pizarro, back to Lampard! Well, it's the first time we've seen anything of Frank Lampard in this game. 
plays a very good one-two with Pizarro. Unfortunately, the finish didn't match the build-up. Well, there was a lot of speculation, Trevor, before the game over whether Sean Maloney would start the match if Stylian Petrov haven't uh, picked up the bug. He may well have been looking on from the sidelines, but it was Sean Maloney scoring away for Aston Villa just as he did at Sunderland. Spectacular free kick at the Stadium of Light. Close range effort here, both just as important. Pizarro. Lampard. Joe Cole. The rest of the supporters, particularly those in the lower tier, are the two teams in the Carvalho's missed it. No harm done that time. It's an afternoon like this, Bill, when you actually miss John Terry with his heading ability against the likes of John Carew. Early on, there are signs that Carvalho and Alex, they don't relish the uh, physical co uh, confrontation they're going to have this afternoon with big John Carew. And Carew, who has uh, performance against Manchester City last time out, was hailed as immense by his manager. On his day, he is nothing short of that. He does tend to save the best for when he takes on the best. Vital supporting role in uh, that Sean Maloney opener. And uh, let's not forget an excellent chance from that Ashley Young cross a few moments before to have uh, put Chelsea behind. Essia. Paolo Ferreira. Lampard. Kalou. Pizarro. play from John Carew, Barry and Baumann. And Bonlehor. Kalu comes across to help out Ashley Cole. Melberg now. Maloney. Show too much of that to Ashley Cole. Messier, Shevchenko, Joko fizzed in towards him, Andrei Shevchenko held up by his former AC Milan teammate Martin Larsson. Now in Bonlehor, got support from Maloney. Sean! 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 Chelsea free kick advantage played by Phil Dow. Can they make it count? Pizarro. Lampard, Cole, Paolo Ferreira, just starting to string a few passes together, Chelsea, Lampard, Kalou, Shevchenko called for the early ball, more measured from Salomon Kalou, who finds Frank Lampard, looking for his 100th goal, won't come this time, 99 not out so far for Frank Lampard for Chelsea, terrific pass forward from Mac Bonnehoff, and Michael Essien is going to find himself in the referee's book. We saw a good example there of the pace of Agbon Lahore when he's got possession of that ball. Initially goes away from Cole. It's left to Essien to track him down. He was going away from Essien and Essien fouls him and goes into the book as a result of this challenge. The suspension to follow for Michael Essien, it will be slightly academic, he'll miss the uh, FA Cup tie here against Queen's Park Rangers, but he'll probably have jetted off for African Cup of Nations duty by then anyway. Carew, the target, no surprise there, at Bon Lahore, goodness me, looks in the mood and he fires that across the face of Czech's goal. 
Another chance for Villa. Once again, the combination of Kuru and Agbon Lahore very much in evidence. Carvalho can't deal with it. Agbon Lahore gets in behind Kalu. Difficult angle, but pr probably should have hit the target. Kalu. He saw a hint of a gap there and was upended by Nigel Riococo, who saw the danger, but danger is clear and present from this situation. Clearly takes the leg, this real coker of Kalu, in what will be a very dangerous position for Aston Villa to defend this free kick. Alex is a wonderful striker of the ball, as is Shevchenko. And let's not forget Frank Lampard, who's hovering. And the way they're set up, it looks like Lampard might be third in the queue, or he might be teed up by one of the other Chelsea Trident waiting to strike this. Messages coming from the Chelsea bench towards Andrei Shevchenko. He's trying to get it across. Chelsea feel the wall is not in the full distance back. Shevchenko. Well, the wall did its job. Shevchenko dispossessed by Agbom Lahore. Carew sets off. Carvalho comes across. He's missed it. Carew trying to get his way through. The athleticism of Essien just got his body between man and ball. Just sense so, Trevor. Chelsea do not know how to contain this Aston Villa threat. They've got problems at both ends of the field because they can't deal with Carew. They're not enjoying the pace of Agbon Lahore nor Ashley Young in wide areas. And up front, without Drogba, they really do lack pace. Pizarro and Shevchenko are decent hold up players but they can't run in behind Aston Villa. And Aston Villa's free kick, more concerningly for Chelsea. Trevor just mentioned the two men they are without, they could do well without losing him. He's off getting treatment, Frank Lampard. Just about able to shackle Carew. Ashley Young. Baumer. Cole. Pizarro. He's giving it away. Ashley Young. Pizarro. Joe Cole. Claudio Pissarra, space in the heart of the field for Frank Lampard. Essien, turned straight into trouble in the form of Ashley Young, who come across to make up the numbers, and Rio Coca can carry forward. Alex has committed himself. Agbon Lahore to his right. Gabby Agbon Lahore. Well, the problems are piling up for Chelsea because Frank Lampard is clearly in trouble, he's just signalled to the dugout that he would like to come off. He has a side problem as Aston Villa break here. The ball once again to Agbon Lahore, fisted it across the box. Just a little bit too firm and it eludes Maloney at the back post. Shevchenko. Perfect playing conditions but a misfortune. He is raining down on Chelsea at the moment. Largely inflicted by Aston Villa. Kalu. When they face their test under Avram Grant, the two defeats away at Old Trafford in his very first game and uh, the last away defeat uh, the weekend before last at Arsenal against the top two, but this is an altogether different examination on their home patch the game has been taken to them by Aston Villa in the first half of this first half and they have not stood up to the task too well so far yeah. 
It'll be interesting to see who comes on in place of Frank Lampard. Such an important player for Chelsea. They've got various options on the bench. Mikel, a midfield player. Sean Wright Phillips can play wide, of course, releasing Joe Cole to come into the centre. But my guess is that it could be Michael Ballack. So much spoken about uh, Michael Ballack. As we have another look at this uh, clash of heads, which has led to Andrei Shevchenko getting treatment. Well, now in the hour of need, can Michael Ballack come back off the treatment table? His first Premier League appearance of the season and help get Chelsea back into this match. No doubt about it, Frank Lampard's not going to play any significant further part here. A big concern over him is to how much more they'll be seeing him over this busy Christmas period. Well, it is Michael Ballack. A little taste of action he got here in the Carling Cup win against Liverpool. The game largely taken care of by the time he was introduced there. And it's at the other extreme here at the moment, isn't it? Messia. Balak. Wow, that's an immediate welcoming committee from Nigel Rio Coca who might be lucky to escape the referee's notebook here. Midfielder, a free kick for Chelsea. Joe Cole will deliver. Balak among those in that disappointment for Chelsea in terms of the delivery. Ashley Carr, Michael Essia, Balak. Carvalho. Pizarro, good time run from the Peruvian. Excellent ball, this is from Carvalho, playing on the right wing for a moment. Puts in Pizarro, he puts it across the box, but once again, confident handling from Scott Carson. Balak, again locking horns with uh, an Aston Villa midfielder, this time it's Gareth Barry. And the man has come off second best. Straight away, right in the thick of it, the uh, German international captain. Well, it's clear use of the elbow there from Balak. I think he knew exactly what he was doing there. Gareth Barry coming to close him down, using his elbow to try and hold the England international off. And he's caught one straight in the face. There it goes, right into the face of Gareth Barry. Had the referee seen it from that angle, then the uh, action might have been a little bit different. And just sense with the way it's been going for Aston Villa and Gareth Barry recently, that'll only go to add a little steely determination to uh, the cause of getting something here at Stamford Bridge. Carvalho. Cole. Joe Cole looking for Ashley and picking him out. Ashley Cole goes down in the penalty area. No penalty given. Villa complete their clearance through Melberg. Cole found himself very well advanced but on the end of the pass by Joe Cole not scored yet for Chelsea but hoping to help them on a way to an equalising goal by earning the penalty Field out unimpressed 
Well, immediately looked at Phil Dowd's position and he wasn't far from the action. He had an excellent position to look in on the incident. Ashley Young. Let's have another check on Phil Dowd's decision, Trevor, and uh, see whether he got it right. Well, the right hand of Agbon Lahore goes into the back of uh, Ashley Cole. He obviously feels it, but I think it goes over a little bit too easily. Shevchenko. Looking for Balak. Suspicions he might just have held on to it for a little long. Slides into the challenge with Ashley Young. I'll tell you what, there are a few challenges starting to go in there. Balak. Shevchenko. You just feel that Phil Dowd has now got to get a firm grip of this game. Half an hour played, Aston Villa 1-0 up. One or two tasty challenges. It could boil over any moment. Joe Cole does well to dig it out, looking for Kalu, but Carson again is very sure of decision. Well, it's beautifully set up, isn't it, here? There's everything that we hoped it might this match, a uh, determined Villa performance. And a real task on Chelsea's hands to get what they want out of this game, what they need out of this game to keep a title challenge alive. Arsenal prevail at Portsmouth later in the Premier League. There'll be nine points off the pace. I'm a little surprised, Bill, how deep Pizarro is playing in this game. We talked about a 4-4-2 formation, but he's playing as the link man. Shevchenko is the lone central striker. We talked about the flashpoints, uh, out on the field that Avram Grant uh, surveys, but hey, what the Michael Balak introduction has certainly livened things up in that early clash with Rio Coco, which he felt uh, he should have got more for Michael Balak, and then of course that uh, rather naughty challenge we saw um, on Gareth Barry. Just feel that might not be the end of that particular saga. February 2004, the last time that Chelsea were beaten in the Premier League on home soil. So plenty of time to get the situation back in their favour. And it's going to be hard work. Essien. Joe Cole. Arsene Rose Heights. On its way by Barry. The goal scorer Maloney. Melberg Balak and his quick feet got him away from Kalu Here is John Carew. Well, the home fans are not happy with the linesman. It did look to me that as that ball was played, John Carew was a clear yard or two offside. Uses his strength to get it away from Messi and touched by Ashley Cole. And Bon Lahore penetrated well. Right at him, but couldn't have seen much of it. Once again, it's not great defending. Essien allows Carew to turn him too easily. 
the clearance doesn't get distance full stack Bon Lahore on this occasion his strike is on target and Czech has to make the save Pizarro Balak Messian Pizarro Pizarro looking for Kalu. Only finding Gareth Barry making up the defensive numbers for Aston Villa. Aston Villa with the smallest squad uh, in the Premier League. But so many of their players have featured in every game. No side in this division has. Uh, had more regulars than Aston Villa have, they all know their jobs. They're all doing them pretty well so far to keep Chelsea at bay. It'd be a big staging post if they could get to half-time with their lead intact. Joe Cole and Chelsea have other plans. Just under 10 minutes left on the first half. Sean Maloney's goal. It's Villa a West London lead. Essien, Carvalho, Shevchenko, now Rio Coca, and a slide in Carew, Carvalho, Essien. Pizarro Villa pressing means that Chelsea go nowhere except for backwards what they're doing Aston Villa is they're making Chelsea pass the ball but it's all in front of their back four they can't get in behind them and of course they're uh, without the uh, services now of Frank Lampard who has got that ability to make runs in behind the back four? Well, it's been an astonishing run by Chelsea in the Premier League over these uh, last four years since Arsenal came here and won. But how many times have they been helped out by a late goal from Dropper or a sensational strike from Lampard? Neither of those two available to them here. They're going to need to do it another way. Take nothing away from the players who are out there and. Uh, match winners all over the pitch so it's going to be that they are going to need that from a different avenue Balak stolen by Agbonlaho streaks forward again it's a terrific run again by Gabby Agbonlaho Alex comes across to cut him off Kalu Kalu doing an excellent burst forward himself. Now Pizarro, it's kept alive by Balak. Here's Joe Cole. Shevchenko and Kalu wait in the middle. Joe Cole can't get it through to them. Goal kick, Aston Villa. Excellent defending from Wilfred Balmer. He didn't go to ground. He stayed on his feet. He was strong, determined. Shepherding that ball out for a goal kick when Joe Cole was looking to get to the byline to deliver a ball into the box this is the chance for Agbon Lahore hits the target Petr Cech makes the save but they've certainly been good value haven't they for this lead we talked into the build up to the game Martin O'Neill about the fact that his side against the big four needed to sustain a performance over a full 90 minutes so cool well, that's about the first time they've got in behind the Aston Villa back four it was a superb ball from Balak plays it first time Joko in behind Balmer knows he has to do it early as the centre half comes across to make the challenge but it's straight at Scott Carson and that's what they need from Michael Balak the German national side build the team around him
Just as Bayern Munich did for many years. He has to be the focus of pulling the strings for Chelsea here, just as he did there for Joe Cole. Young. Baumer. Messian for Joe Cole, Pizarro, Balak, touch into the path of Cole again, taken care of by Larson but at the expense of a Chelsea corner. Joe Cole, Alex Rosewell, uh, puts his head away. Gets good elevation here, Alex. Gets up above Zat Knight, but couldn't direct his header towards goal. Looking for his first goal here on home soil, Alex. Both his previous ones. Right, Rosenbergen against Middlesbrough. Came uh, at the grounds of the opponents. Just one defeat on the road in the last nine months, Aston Villa. And judging by this first half performance, you can see why Manchester City, the only side to uh, steal the spoils away from them. One by Pizarro. Cole will leave it to Balak. the man who has made the difference this is the all-important goal at Bonhoor delivers it to Carew who shows great vision to head it back across to his striking partner Maloney and he slots it past Petacek with ease offside flag this time coming to Chelsea's rescue Alex comes to join the attack. Still making his way towards the edge of the uh, Villa penalty area here, Alex. Paulo Ferreira, Pizarro. Let's look for the return. Balak as Chelsea look to keep the pressure on. More blue shirts wait in the middle. Paulo Ferreira unable to pick them out. He's got a bon Lahore making inroads down the centre and only for support. Chelsea now their defensive ranks matched and they're able to bring it away again. Ferreira. Maloney. And a shimmy to throw Pizarro off the scent. Sean Maloney's already got one and he's got another. Another mistake from Petacek, and another goal for Sean Maloney. It all starts, you know, from the wide area. It's a brilliant dummy that Maloney produces. That gives him the space. He can't believe it, Maloney. He must have been pleased getting his shot on target, but he would never have expected Petacek to make that kind of mistake. That's the dummy deceives Pizarro, comes on the inside of Alex 
Alex needs to get tighter and closer to the player. The shot comes in, and that's an absolute howler, isn't it, from Petr Cech? It's too easy the way he comes inside Alex, hits the target. And that doesn't need me to tell Petr Cech is awful. So uncharacteristic, you think about the one at Arsenal where he misjudged the corner, but that one, perhaps even worse. Patched up and rushed back into the side, Petr Cech. Oh, Chelsea paying the price for that. Well, when you see Petr Cech make a mistake like that, you just wonder, is he actually 100% fit? Is he trying to cover something up? Is he hiding something, trying to make that save? Because that wasn't what we've come to expect from one of the top keepers in European football. Two 0 the scoreline earlier on this season. Chelsea beaten that day. Pizarro looking to run in behind, but Scott Carson, who's been faultless in what he's been asked to do so far in this first half, as we go into the two added minutes. Well, who could have foreseen this outside the Villa camp? Chelsea trailing by two goals to nil on home at home on Boxing Day. Beaten home record hanging by a thread. Messier. Kalou, who gave the ball away for the first goal in the build-up to allow the uh, cross to come in from McBonlaw. Messiaen. Joe Cole. Here's Paolo Ferreira. One back for Chelsea here would uh, alter the picture dramatically. Kalu, Ashley Cole, Salomon Kalu, puts it into the mix that night there, here's Michael Essien, a turn from Balak goes down under pressure and Chelsea have the penalty. Well then don't be Chelsea get fortunate here. Essien really should have hit it first time. Alex to come on to his left foot. Doesn't get a good strike on it. But the ball somehow gets through to Michael Ballack, who gets go side. I think he invites the challenge. It comes in, I believe, from Zach Knight. There's Michael Ballack. There's the challenge from Zach Knight. Ballack goes over, inviting Phil Dow to give the penalty, which he has done. And the Chelsea crowd paying for a red card for Zat Knight. Denying a goal scoring opportunity. For all the world, it looks like Villa will be reduced to 10 men as this match hitches on a dramatic turnaround in first half stoppage time. Zat Knight, the hero against Chelsea back in September, is sent off back in West London. Villa down to 10 men and with every chance that their lead will be halved. Well, Michael Ballack's clever, isn't he? There was minimal amount of contact, but he threw himself to the ground, making sure that A, he was going to win the penalty, and B, he did his absolute utmost to make sure Phil Dowd was in a position where he could give a red card. It's a double whammy against Aston Villa, at a crucial moment, right on the stroke of half-time, another 30 seconds, they'd be celebrating a 2-0 half-time lead. Still could be that, of course, if Chelsea missed the penalty. Frank Lampard's not here to take it. Who's going to have the responsibility? Well, Michael Ballack, so faultless from the spot for club and country. 
has taken a step back and Andrei Shevchenko will take responsibility. The man who has scored penalties to win European Cups and missed penalties to lose European Cups. Scores for Chelsea. And they are right back in business. Just when they look down and out, their record signing gets them back into the match. It's a well-taken penalty from Shevchenko. Sending Scott Cars on the wrong way. And what a lifeline that is for Chelsea. They've been second best throughout this first half. Phil Dow, the referee who awarded two penalties in the last Premier League match he took. Charge of and sent off one player has awarded one and sent off one. As this match has been turned on its head in first half stoppage time. Villa, good value, you have to say, for their two goals, both from Sean Maloney. They looked into, into control when Petr Cech spilled Maloney's second effort after he slid it home from close range for his first. But back came Chelsea, awarded a penalty for Balak's foul. That night, the man who did it, and upset Andrei Shevchenko. It's Chelsea 1, 10-man Aston Villa 2. Welcome back to Stamford Bridge, which is still reverberating with the late drama we've seen here at the first half. Michael Balak upended for the penalty converted by Andrei Shevchenko. Red card for Zat Knight. And Villa reorganise at half-time. One substitution for them. Curtis Davis comes on for only his second substitute appearance in the last eight Premier League games. Sean Maloney, who has scored both of Aston Villa's goals, is the man who is sacrificed. Aston Villa who had such good times in the first 45 minutes few in Stamford Bridge could have argued as we approached half time that they were good value for a 2-0 lead but the match with a vastly different complexion on it now and although they still trail Chelsea by that one goal margin very much favourites now to at least continue their unbeaten home record Kalou Pizarro. Here's Essien. No changes for Chelsea, just the one enforced on them with that first half injury to Frank Lampard. And Michael Balak, his replacement, and witness me, Trevor, has Balak had an eventful afternoon so far? Well, he was only on the field for two minutes when he was involved in a controversial incident with Gareth Barry. Was it intentional, the elbow in Gareth's face? And then, of course, an even more contentious issue. Was it a penalty or wasn't it a penalty? Here's Essien. Balak goes to ground in the penalty area again. Shevchenko. Carvalho. Essien. Paolo Ferreira. The only disappointing aspect now is it's deprived us of seeing what was a very good contest between two teams who were hell-bent on going forward trying to score goals. The strategy of Martin O'Neill's team was great to see. Obviously that changes now with them being a man less. It's going to be a rear guard action trying to uh, keep what they've got. And are Chelsea good enough to get back into this game? John Carew plays the lone striking role, a giant target they've got up front. Aston Villa, but it's Chelsea on the front foot again, looking to pick up Pizarro. Balak's touch, Andrei Shevchenko! That's can dig it out from under his feet. You're absolutely right, couldn't get the ball out of his feet. As a result of that, he's got to dig it out, can't get sufficient power on it. Carson on his six-yard box, narrowing the angle, makes a comfortable save. The Villa's success in the first half was largely bred on the fact that they took the game to Chelsea. How are they going to fare with that sitting back and soaking up Chelsea pressure?
Essien. And it's perfect for Joe Cole. Straight into Gareth Barry. Optimistic shouts for handball from some of the Chelsea supporters down below us. Pizarro showed too much to last. He's going to have a go. Well, after seeing Peter Cech make an absolute meal of the uh, second goal for Aston Villa, it does appear that uh, they all fancy their chances now, even Martin Larson from 30 yards. Well, he has scored a couple of goals, not quite that spectacular in London this season. Got a couple in that extraordinary topsy turvy game, the four all draw at White Hart Lane. He was again on the ball. Martin Larson, thankfully now, seemingly free of those endless knee problems which blighted his Aston Villa career in their three years now, still short of 50 games for the club. And the man alongside him now, that's him, Curtis Davis. Ferreira. As you expect with the one-man advantage, Chelsea enjoying uh, the most comfortable possession period of the match. Kalou, here is Shevchenko! An absolute beauty from Andrei Shevchenko! And Chelsea are level, he looks bewildered, it rattled past him! Sean Maloney 2, Andrei Shevchenko 2, and that means Chelsea are back on level terms. A quite brilliant strike from Andriy Shevchenko Kalu sets him off has one touch Bauma really should have gone earlier to close him down he stands off him allowing Shevchenko to get the shot away and it literally flies past Carson well, if there was a touch of fortune about Chelsea's first a debatable penalty perhaps absolutely no question marks about that the Andrei Shevchenko of old. The last minute of the first half and the fifth minute of the second half. A pair from Andrei Shevchenko, it's four in his last six games now for the Ukrainian. In the absence of Trompo when they were looking for Big men to stand up and make big contributions. Shevchenko has done just that here. Kalu. Well, this is the goal again. Shevchenko. Bauma comes out. Should have gone all the way to close him down. But the shot is absolutely brilliant from Andrei Shevchenko. Outside the box, three or four yards outside the box. Carson nowhere near it. And it seems a long time, doesn't it? That uh, everyone has been talking about Chelsea and Balak and Shevchenko and what they have delivered for the side on the pitch. Shevchenko with the goals, Balak with the assist, if you like, for the first one. And winning Chelsea's penalty. And arguably that is what he did, he won the penalty from that situation. Martin O'Neill, having seen his side dominate for so long in the first half, now he is staring down the barrel. Sometimes, you know, there's no justice in football. It can be a cruel game. And that's what it's been for Aston Villa. They should be well in the lead by now. But they find themselves 2-2 with 40 minutes to go and Chelsea from looking as if they were down and out now look favourites to go on and win this game we touched on it in the first half but Martin O'Neill speaking about how against the big four the top sides in the land his side need to be right at it for 90 minutes to stand a chance of getting anything out of the game he cited the example of their win earlier on this season 
was uh, doing exactly that. And it was uh, a moment of madness, moment of myth, fortune, call it what you will, at the end of the first half, which saw the pendulum swing back in Chelsea's favour. Ferreira. Essien. Shevchenko. Carvalho. It's a very different Chelsea out there now. Essien. Pizarro. Balak. They all want to get in on the act now. He's been out for a long time, Balak. But he doesn't look ring rusty since he's come on. He's made a major contribution. And of course, with Aston Villa down to 10 men, it suits his game now. He can go on, join in with the front. He's a very attacking midfield player. And as we saw, as he won the penalty, he's going to get more and more into the opposing penalty box. Messiaen. Terrific work by Messiaen. Draws the foul from Nigel Rio Coca. Well, the yellow card is not for that challenge by Real Coker on Essien. Phil Dowd remembers the three or four that were committed during the first half. And as a result of that, he decides enough's enough and Real Coker goes in his book. And sent off against Manchester United, missed against Arsenal, suspended Nigel Rio Coker, yet another for his car count. Essien, the only Chelsea player booked so far. Carew. The odds vastly stacked against John Carew, but he's done well to win the throw even. And a long time out for Michael Ballack and he, he needs to make up for lost time here this afternoon. April, the last time he started a match for Chelsea. A draw at Newcastle United. Here's Gareth Barry. Balmer. Up towards Carew. Carvalho got enough on it, he also got a little nudge in the back. Shevchenko Kalu Balak shapes to shoot Carlson will not make the same mistake as his Chelsea counterpart Well this is a good fully 30 yards out and Scott Carson gets all of his body behind this Balak tees himself up hits it on target doesn't get the power he would have wanted Carew, Gainley battling all alone up there. He's going to be doing a lot of that in the uh, remaining 35 minutes or so of this match. Cole. Shevchenko. Kalu. Shevchenko had made the run. What if the early ball played? And Perhaps Kalu's decision making a little awry there. And a well won by Kalu, it's released Gareth Barry from Villa's midfield. Support from Ashley Young. Tried to find a gap. Look for the penalty. Phil Dowd is not going to give another, not this time anyway. Cole. Shevchenko, lovely back here for Pizarro, read by Larson. And Con Lahore, what a brave burst by him. Looking for Carew, is he giving him too much to do? 
National goal. He was going to go to ground under the challenge and he's uh, on the free kick for Chelsea. Well, that was a pity because it was a great run from that Bon Lahore, but he picked the wrong option. If only he'd realised that instead of to his right was Carew on his left. Surprisingly, totally unmarked. I'm not sure what he was doing there. Was Larson. Stolen by Barry from the feet of Shevchenko. Villa just showing they've not come here to lie down and make a gift of it to Chelsea. Ashley Young, great work from him. And not too far away from squeezing it in at an impossible angle. It's a great reaction from Aston Villa. Down to ten men. Ashley Young goes past Ferreira. Alex comes over with a rash challenge. He must have got a touch because the referee is given a corner. Situations like this where the one-man advantage doesn't count too much in Chelsea's favour. He sends up some big men from the back. Petr Cech has come and it's a comfortable, more customary for the goalkeeping from Chelsea's number one. Alex Cole. Advantage play. There was a foul on Nigel Rio Coca. Olaf Melberg. Barry. Slip from Rio Coca at the crucial moment. Essien is away here for Chelsea. Shevchenko sets up on his run as well. Michael Essien still going. Salomon Kalou back to Essien. That's the problem that Aston Villa have when they lose possession, those midfield areas, they're quickly going to get hit on the counter-attack. They must make sure they get enough players behind the ball. They survive there because Chelsea didn't pick the right pass. Joe Cole is unmarked on the right-hand side. Ferreira and Andrei Shevchenko in the hunt for a hat-trick. They played a supporting role this time and it was agonisingly going across the face of Villa's goal there. I can't believe that Pizarro didn't take up another position. Shevchenko put the ball in early and just look at Pizarro's position here. On the edge of the box, he doesn't move. In fact, he's coming out the box. There he is on the edge of the box. It's a useful ball from Shevchenko. Pizarro's got to get on the front foot. If his co-striker's in a wide area, he's got to be the one taking responsibility, getting in the box. Ashley Young. In a sense, he knows Ashley Young. And he has the beating of Paolo Ferreira one-on-one. Simple for a throw on this occasion. gift of it to Ashley Young who's looking for Carew no queries about the uh, referee's decision that time Ashley Cole did well for Carew because I think if he had gone and stayed on the ground and maybe rode over a couple of times 
I think Phil Dow may have given a yellow card. Paolo Pereira to Essien. Carvalho. Shevchenko. And with just one man to mark, and John Carew. Seeing a little more adventure from some of the Chelsea centre halves, but they need to get back here because it's picked up by Bonnerhall. Carew. Now Kalu. Aston Villa's free kick. A different sort of a match in the second half, and you'd expect that with Sat Knight's red card right at the end of the first. It's still a fascinating battle. Chelsea have got one of the two goals they needed in this period to claim all three points and temporarily close the gap at the top. Nothing but a win will do here for Chelsea. In terms of championship hopes, not too many margins for error. And Bon Lahore. Young. Now Wilfred Baum. Carew calling for the ball. Back comes Essien who just wanted to get it out of there. He's done that. But at the expense of a corner. away by Pizarro Cole can get the better of Balmer no foul Ashley Young chance to take on Michael Ballack Essien Paolo Ferreira Claudio Pizarro here's Balak. Ashley Cole SCM Alex Shevchenko Delightful turn from Shevchenko to tee up Alex It's a lovely move It is a great goal for Chelsea Who have turned it around From 2-0 down they lead 3-2 Shevchenko with the assist that time and a bullet of a finish for Alex, it's his first Stamford Bridge goal, and it is 3-2 for Chelsea. So much to admire about this goal from Chelsea. The approach work was excellent, the finish was quite clinical from Alex. Shevchenko plays his part again. Deceives Gareth Barry, who gets too tight, plays it to Alex. Curtis Davis, a rash challenge gets nothing on it and it makes it so much easier for Alex here's Alex on the ball there's Curtis Davis if you go to ground there you've got to get something on it Alex goes past him Bomer comes across Alex gets the shot away nice and early right in the corner Carson once again beaten given no chance Athletic feet from the big Brazilian to dance beyond the challenge of Curtis Davis. But worth Trevor dwelling a little more on the contribution of Andrei Shevchenko, so often so maligned for his uh, contribution over the games, over his time at the club to the Chelsea cause. But today, a perfect penalty, a delightful second, and an assist for the third. We're finally starting to see a little bit of what he's capable of producing. Carvalho. Shevchenko looking for Kalu. be feeling a lot more cheery now
Even more pleasing for Ephraim Grant. And reassuring, really, than anything else is that this comeback has been achieved with no Terry. With a mistake by this man, Petr Cech, having put them 2-0 down. No Didier Drogba and no Frank Lampard, who was off injured. The one thing this team has, Bill, is plenty of character. You're absolutely right. Some would disagree, but the best three players, Drogba, Lampard and Terry, are all off the field at this moment. But there's still plenty of good players out there. And this really is a Boxing Day cracker, isn't it? Absolutely, for those who are arguing that Boxing Day football should be put on the back burner. I think this uh, will be enough to convince them otherwise. It's been fantastic entertainment at Stamford Bridge. Painful for Aston Villa, of course. Delightful for Chelsea. And a peppering of controversy too. Shevchenko and the quarter of a match left to play you have to feel it's now a case of how many for Chelsea oh, they've been linking together some attacking moves surely this is not the end of their uh, boxing day bonanza Yeah. With the challenge of Rio Coca. A little bit of luck as it finds its way through to Pizarro. Carson keeps it out. <laughs> Pizarro takes it nice and early. I'm not sure that Scott Carson needed to make that save. He was definitely going wide. Didn't want to take a chance and pushes it with two hands from away for a corner. Goals corner, met by Gareth Barry. Essien. Curtis Davis leading the charge. It's enjoyment for Chelsea and enjoyment by contrast. Wind the clock back 25 minutes. You could not have foreseen this scoreline. As it is, Andrei Shevchenko looks to improve on it. Well, there's a very disappointed Solomon Kalou on the left-hand side because he was screaming for this ball from Shevchenko, but he only had one thing on his mind, and that was hitting the target, looking for his hat-trick. might just see a little bit of uh, selfish play shall we say from Andrei Shevchenko in front of goal in the remaining time how we'd dearly love to get hold of a boxing day match ball to add to his collection which has seen so much mostly for AC Milan over the years but, uh, so many hard times more than anything else here at Chelsea as it is it's defending now to do for the home side Ashley Young to deliver this one and a free kick Larson well would you believe it 10 man Aston Villa are level again with Chelsea what a game this is it's all about the quality of ball from Ashley Young but the finish from Larson was also quite superb plenty of pace from Ashley Young Larson goes after the ball, he's unmarked, still has a lot to do, on the volley, side frits it, past Petr Cech. What a response from Aston Villa, they're not out of this game. Well, we were 
were talking about Andrei Shevchenko, but it's his former AC Milan teammate who has quietened Stamford Bridge. Martin Larson, his third goal of the season. Shevchenko, Pizarro. Carew offside. Good defending from Alex as the ball was about to be striked, or struck, I should say, into a forward area. Alex just stepped out, catching Carew offside. The game chock full of surprises. Couldn't see Chelsea coming back from two down. They did. They took the lead. Couldn't see ten man Villa coming back. They have. Where to look next? Chelsea look to Cole. Shevchenko. Essien. Kalou. Essien. Ashley Cole. Well, they certainly didn't look like getting back on level terms in open play, Aston Villa, but from set pieces, it becomes an equal contest. And they've certainly surprised the home crowd. They thought the game was won, but never right off any team managed by Martin O'Neill. 3-2 down. Shoulders could have dropped as well, but uh, not from Aston Villa. Well, Martin Lee over a quarter of an hour of normal time to go. The onus is back on Chelsea to break down their guests. Although they have come from two down, to fail to get anything other than three points from this now would represent a massive disappointment for Avram Grant and his side. Shevchenko, Balak, Shevchenko. Flip from Balak. And clearance from Melba. <laughs> Shevchenko. They've kind of reverse roles now, haven't they? Pizarro and Shevchenko. Shevchenko playing the link man. And Pizarro's pushed on up front now. Martin O'Neill cajoling, applauding from the sidelines as uh, the pressure on Pedacek forced him to head it out for an Aston Villa throw. <laughs> Wonderful sideshow in itself watching uh, Martin O'Neill's actions on the touchline there. Missed by Alex, and so by Paulo Ferreira. Balak. It's Carvalho. Martin O'Neill looking across from this touchline and looking at uh, John Carew because he's not, gonna let, not left in the tank. So uh, some fresh legs to replace him. Luke Moore 
who has a little habit of scoring against Chelsea. Warm embrace for the big man from his manager. And you can see what Luke Moore's brief is. Chasing down absolutely everything, but Alex carries forward. Towed away by Larson. Agbon Lahore. Now Pizarro. Claudio Pizarro. Joe Cole. Salomon Kalou, Alex, just couldn't find a way through, and a slip by Shevchenko, an escape for Aston Villa. Michael Essien. Ashley Cole, in comes the cross, taken off the toes of Balak by Pizarro. Essien, back in, Shevchenko took a swipe at it, caught more of the defender. And now here comes the Aston Villa counter, Agbon Lahore, vital challenge by Ricardo Carvalho, but it took too much of the man. It was two feet, this is an interesting one for Phil Dowd. We've seen a few players being sent off of late for two-footed challenges. And Carvalho could easily be seen in early bath. It could be red. It is red. Scoreline level. Players level. A red card for Ricardo Carvalho, and this is why. Well, if you challenge like that, you have to accept the consequences. He was the last man at Bon Lahore with his pace. He's always favoured to go past him. Well, this is concerning. Nasty challenge, as we've seen from Ricardo Carvalho. Let's hope that there are not nasty consequences for this wonderful young player for Aston Villa. A match that has had just about everything. They switched off here, Luke Moore is in behind. Ashley Young in the middle. Can Villa steal it? Well, it all looked so nonchalant for Chelsea, didn't it? As they were a little selfish, Andrei Shevchenko looking for his hat-trick as they look to seal the victory. Now are they holding on for a point? Well, at the moment, Essien's gone into the back four to play alongside Alex. A little surprised at that, he's been the driving force from the middle of the park. We've got Ben Ahim on the bench, of course. You look at the consequences a little beyond today for Chelsea as well. No John Terry, we know he's out for uh, several weeks yet with his broken foot. And now they'll be without Ricardo Carvalho for three matches for that challenge. As it stands, they're about to drop points and they're about to lose players here. Chelsea, an injury to Frank Lampard as well. You look at it in the context of a title challenge, it is a costly afternoon. Well, that's an interesting decision, the uh, system referee flagged for a throw-in for Aston Villa. It was quickly overruled by Phil Dow, the favourite Chelsea. He limps his way off Andrei Shevchenko, but as effective as a performance as he's put in in a blue shirt. Set up one, score two Andrei Shevchenko. The concern is that there's yet another knock that Chelsea and Avram Grant have to contend with. One plus side for them, that festive schedule is exceptionally kind. They don't need to leave West London to play a game in any competition until January the 19th. Even their away games are just down the road at Fulham.
close to stealing it there, Gabriel upon Lahore. Gareth Barry has. Chelsea ball. And the way this game has gone, don't rule out a late sting in the tail. Claudio Pizarro, Michael Essien, trying to work it through to Kalou. Curtis Davis, of the telling touch in there, and Melberg can clatter it clear. Alex. Side flag here against Joe Cole. And Chelsea will make another change, another of their players who they'll be missing for large sways of early 2008 comes off. The Nigerian international John Obi Mikel replaces Claudio Pizarro. Looks like more of a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3 I should say for Chelsea here as they look to chase the game. Sean Wright Phillips push forward down this right hand side. Joe Cole on the left, Kalu down the middle. And Balak and Mikel in the heart of midfield. Here is the German. Essien. Great charge from Michael Essien. He's found Ashley Cole. Away by Larson, only as far as Balak. Messia, <laughs> Sean Wright Phillips, early ball in, great ball in. Kalu, Cole, Joe Cole for Chelsea. Real last ditch defending here from Aston Villa and a free kick for Chelsea inside the D there. My, my first thoughts were that's a harsh decision. Let's have another look at it. Certainly, Real Coker made a fair challenge. I think probably there was Larson. Who made the foul from behind? Let's have a look. And there you can see clearly, and that's the view that Phil Dowd also had. Now then, Chelsea options. It's got to be Alex, doesn't it? No Shevchenko, no Lampard. Although Michael Balak might fancy a crack. In the game that has delivered everything on Boxing Day. Will one of the men in blue provide a final twist? Contribution Balak has made this afternoon. Question marks about the Aston Villa war. Scott Carson is furious. I think it was Real Coker, the last man. White goes across there, giving the space to Balak. Only he will know. He finds the space, finds the accuracy, and the ball is in the corner. And Scott Carson beaten yet again for the fourth time. His first Premier League appearance of the season, Michael Balak. His first Premier League goal of the season. Absolutely priceless. <laughs> well, 
Aston Villa have already drawn four all once in London this season. Can they find it within themselves to come back again? They've got 90 seconds just about of normal time. They've got one final throw of the dice in terms of a substitution available to them as well, and they're going to use it in a minute. Send on Marlon Howard. Luke Moore kind of bulldoze his way through the Chelsea defence. Alabama picked up a knock, it's going to be his uh, last contribution anyway. Villa stack the forward line as they look for a second equaliser. 2-0 up they were, don't forget, just before half-time. Then a red card for Zatnaid, a penalty for Chelsea. Won by Balak, converted by Shevchenko. An absolute beauty by Shevchenko to level it up for Chelsea early on in the second half. Great goal from Alex to give Chelsea the lead. Larson back for Villa. Now can Villa come back again? Ashley Cole got in the way. Olaf Melberg here into the mix. Marlon Howard, can he finish here for Aston Villa? Back in by Barry! They just can't finish it off here. Off the line by Ashley Cole. Appeals for handball. They surround the referee. And Phil Dowd has given the penalty. And it's got to be a red card also. Ashley Cole will have to leave the field. He's the guilty one on the goal line. The assistant referee clearly spotted it. Phil Dowd didn't see it. He brought it to his attention. And Chelsea surely will be reduced to nine men. Appeals from Chelsea that it came off the chest of their left back, falling on deaf ears for the second time at that end of the field. For an incident inside the penalty area, Phil Dowd looks certain to show a red card. There it is. Chelsea down to nine. Deliberate handball on the goal line by Ashley Cole. decisions from the man in black today Gareth Barry who has three goals for Aston Villa this season all of them from the penalty spot to salvage a point at Stamford Bridge yellow card for Balak for Chapak and again for Harewood And he's making him re-spot it. Check was the villain in the first half with that horrendous mistake. Last minute of the game, will he be Chelsea's hero? An extraordinary climax at Stamford Bridge. Barry for Aston Villa. Scores! 4-4. And who would begrudge this spirited Villa fight back again? Full marks to Gareth Barry. Under enormous pressure. He knows full well that if he misses, his team go away from Stamford Bridge with absolutely nothing. He's kept his cool. He slots it with his left foot into the wrong, the opposite corner from which Czech makes his move. It's a great penalty from the Villa skipper and how they deserve this point. They've been good value this afternoon, Aston Villa. It's been a topsy-turvy game. You need about 20 minutes trying to explain everything that's happened. <laughs> we'll carry on till New Year's Day discussing this one. It's an over overused term, isn't it, in football Christmas cracker, but we have had just that here from start to finish when Villa took the game to Chelsea right to the end where they have snatched all three points away from them and it looks like it'll all be shared on Boxing Day at Stamford Bridge twice Chelsea thought they'd done enough to win it once through Alex and one through Balak Chelsea's nine men against Villa's ten eight goals three red cards Two penalties in there as well. Oh, 
still querying looks down there as to how much time there is to be added on. I don't think we've seen a board yet from uh, Andy Durso, the fourth official. Because we haven't had a signal from Phil Dowd, I suspect, in all the melee. Well, that is that. An extraordinary story at Stamford Bridge on Boxing Day. And a point for Aston Villa. Chelsea's Christmas curse looks like striking again. They couldn't win a game last year, and they couldn't win one this year. Down to nine men, and they were denied right at the death by a penalty from Gareth Barry. That doesn't really tell the tale. 2-0 down just before half-time, Chelsea. Back they came through two goals from Andrei Shevchenko, one of which involved a red card for Zat Knight. Chelsea took the lead through Alex, but back came Aston Villa through Martin Larson, 3-3. Michael Ballack's free kick looked to have won it for Chelsea. Ricardo Carvalho sent off in the meantime. And right in stoppage time, Ashley Cole's red card for a, what looked a debatable goal line handball. And Gareth Barry could steal a point for Aston Villa. It has been memorable stuff on Boxing Day at Stamford Bridge. It has been Chelsea 4, Aston Villa 4.